Hey guys, it's Yuran and today I want to share with you my Google interview experience so you know what to expect and also learn from my mistakes. But first I want to quickly mention that I know it's been a while since the last time I posted a video. It's been an event for a couple months. I actually got married this month, uh, so I did spend some time planning the wedding and recuperating and stuff. And I also just started my new job at Facebook. So I had a lot going on, but I'm slowly getting back to a normal schedule. Uh, and I definitely want to spend more time on my YouTube channel. So uh, I want to thank you all for all the lovely comments and for being so patient. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. In the past few years, I went through the full Google interview process twice. I ended up doing uh, seven interviews in each cycle for a total of 14 interviews. Um, so that's quite a bit of interviews and I did get a bunch of questions from you guys about my Google interviews So I wanted to share with you how it was for me I definitely had some ups and downs during this process and I'm going to be very honest about all of it So without further ado, let's get straight into it So ever since I was a student looking for internships I would apply to Google positions uh, through the career site and I was pretty consistent about it Like at least once a year I would apply again and I was basically ignored every time but a few years ago, I applied again, this time through an employee referral. And that was the first time that I actually got a call from a Google recruiter. I didn't know at the time, but being referred by an employee actually makes a world of difference. It's like skipping the line. So if you know someone that works for a company that you're interested in, do not use the career site. Always go for the employee referral. And by the way, don't be shy about asking for one. All the big tech companies have referral programs that compensate employees for bringing in good people. So that means that if you get in, they get a very nice bonus. So everybody wins. So in that initial call, the recruiter asked a few questions about my experience. She explained their interviewing process a little. And then after that, we scheduled my first phone interview. We scheduled it for two weeks later, so I'd have some time to prepare. Um, and by the way, that was my decision. She made it really clear that I can take all the time that I need. Uh, so if you feel that you need to take more time, that is completely up to you. There is absolutely no pressure from their side. She then sent me some more information regarding what to expect from that interview and some tips for preparing. Uh, nothing too surprising. This was going to be a typical coding interview uh, focusing on algorithms and data structures. Uh, it was going to be 45 minutes long, conducted via Google Meet. Uh, and all the coding will be done on a Google Doc, which is um, something to be aware of. Uh, you know, you don't get all the amenities of an IDE like uh, autocomplete or auto indentation. So uh, it's probably a good idea to practice coding on a Google Doc at least once uh, just to see how it feels. So anyways, I started preparing by brushing up on my data structures and then I went on leak code, of course. And I have a full video explaining the detailed strategy that I use uh, to prepare for coding interviews. And I'm gonna put a link in the description if you're interested. So the day of the interview came and it was going to start at 10 a.m., uh, which is perfect. I like doing all my interviews in the morning uh, because then you don't have to stress about it for too long after you wake up. You know, you can uh, be done with it fairly early and then move on with your day. Anyways, I was asked uh, two lead code style questions. I'm not allowed to disclose which questions specifically, but even if I could, I don't fully remember them. I do remember getting asked a bunch of small follow-up questions like, uh, why did you choose to do it this way? Or uh, what would you do differently if I told you that this function is going to be called very often? You know, stuff like that. So it's a good idea when you're preparing to also practice uh, answering these follow-up type questions. Anyways, the interview went very well. And the day after I got an email saying that I passed and they wanted to move on to the next step. The next step was the on-site interviews. Uh, that's a full day of interviews, four technical and one behavioral. I decided to take two more weeks to prepare for these. Uh, so we scheduled the on-site for two weeks later. I went in for my first interview at 10 a.m. and unfortunately it didn't go so great. So my day went off to a rocky start. Uh, but then I remember the recruiter telling me that the reason they have five interviews at that stage is because they know that even good candidates may sometimes have an off interview, right? Uh, so they wanna give them a chance to bounce back and still do well. Uh, so I was thinking, okay, I just had my off interview, but if I do well in all of my other interviews, then this could still go my way. And then I did do really well in all of my other interviews. So I finished the day feeling pretty good. Like it wasn't perfect, but this could still have a good outcome. The recruiter called a few days later and said that the opinions were actually split and they couldn't make a decision. So they wanted to offer me to do one more interview. And I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty annoyed with this. I mean, this process is long enough as is, and I started to feel like maybe I'm spending too much time on this. Like maybe it's not even worth it, you know? This is 
so many interviews. It takes so much time and effort. And now you're saying that six isn't enough. We need to have seven. I actually think that a flat out rejection would have been less annoying for me at that point. And I don't know, maybe it was mostly about my ego getting bruised, uh, but I still think that seven interviews is a lot. Uh, anyways, I did finally decide to take the additional interview, but unfortunately I completely lost my confidence. I went into it expecting to fail and that is exactly what I did. I failed pretty hard. I think it might've been my worst interview ever. Uh, and not surprisingly, not too long after, I got a call saying that this was a no for this round. You know, this wasn't like the first job rejection I ever got, but it was the first time that I felt like I did everything I possibly could. I tried my hardest and it wasn't enough. And it made me feel stupid, you know, like my best, my absolute best is not really that great. And it took me a while to kind of get over it, to put it behind me and build up my confidence again to a point where I'm comfortable taking another interview. I did get there, but it took time. So at some point I did feel like I wanted to give this thing another shot. So I applied again and after some time I got a call from the recruiter. We scheduled the phone interview. I prepared for like two or three weeks, every day after work and on the weekends. And when the day of the interview came, I was nervous, but I felt ready, like I was well prepared. The first question went perfectly, uh, but the second one didn't. And in hindsight, I really overcomplicated it. I was sure that I can solve it in linear time, when really the solution was just a tiny optimization over the naive approach. So basically I was so set on finding a linear time solution that I completely missed the answer that was right in front of me. This was a huge lesson for me. The lesson is don't overthink it. This is something that I know happens to a lot of people, especially when you interview for companies like Google or Facebook. You kind of assume that the questions have to be super difficult. So you get in your head trying to come up with these crazy complex ideas, when in reality, sometimes the easy way is the right way. So a good way to avoid doing that is not to go straight for the fully optimized solution, but to try to start with brute force and then optimize and see where it takes you. Especially if you get stuck, that is a really good way to get back on track. Seriously, that one has helped me so much since then that I'm almost happy it happened. I'm not really happy about it. Anyways, I thought I was done with this cycle, but then the uh, recruiter told me that even though the second question didn't go so well, the interviewer saw a lot of potential, so they wanted to do another phone interview. The second phone interview went beautifully and we went on to the on-site. Now, just like the previous cycle, the on-site stage included five interviews in one day, four technical and one behavioral. Some of the interviews went very well, like my system design interview was really good and that actually surprised me because I was really worried about that one. But as it turns out, it was actually the coding interviews that got me. Two of my coding interviews had a completely different style to what I expected. Not lead code style at all, very open-ended, very much focused on design and distributed systems. To be honest, it took me ages to even understand what the question was. I think the type of interview that you get heavily depends on the interviewer's preference. So uh, if you happen to get an interviewer that really likes lead code style questions, then that is what you'll get. But if you get an interviewer that likes more real life, you know, open-ended questions, then you'll get that. So it's pretty random. Um, I don't know if that's how it works, but that is the impression that I got. Uh, anyways, if I had to redo that interview day, the advice I would give myself is to keep an open mind and be more flexible. You need to be mentally prepared for the fact that your interviews might be completely different from what you expected. Don't let it throw you off like I did. Ask clarifying questions and listen to your interviewer. It is impossible to prepare for every eventuality. At some point, you just have to trust yourself and trust that you know this stuff, even if you didn't specifically prepare for it. So again, keep an open mind and be flexible. You'll do fine. Anyways, by the end of the day, I knew I was looking at another Google rejection. This time though, I wasn't all that upset. I mean, I did want it, so I was disappointed, but unlike the first time, I didn't feel like they rejected me because I'm a complete moron, right? I was able to be more rational about it this time because I think that with time, you just learn not to be so hard on yourself. You know, it's okay to fail sometimes. The best you can do is just learn from your failures. And yes, that title cliche is true. I can tell you that I learned a lot from this process and actually learned more from the interviews that I did in ACE. So it definitely wasn't a waste of my time. And I also got to use what I learned not too long after in my interviews for Facebook and I ended up getting the offer that I wanted. So I think the best lesson I took from this, apart from the technical ones, is to just relax. Accept the fact that you're not going to be perfect. 
you might fail and it's not going to feel good. But it's not going to be the last opportunity you'll ever get. There are always going to be more amazing opportunities out there for you. And if you keep working, you will get the one you want. Okay, so that is it for this one. I hope this video was interesting for you. I'm also interested to hear about your interview experiences. Let me know in the comments how you handle rejections and if you can relate to my experience. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.